In a recent article for The Atlantic, the writer makes an argument that I think is interesting and that may calm your fears, at least a little bit, about the role that AI will play in our lives. Let me tell you all about it. A lot of us artists and designers and creatives are doing a lot of thinking about AI and figuring out how it might impact our livelihoods and our own artistic output. Many artists have taken a strong stance against all use of AI, while some see it as an interesting tool that won't replace them but will rather aid them in their art making. What I think is interesting about this article is that it kind of argues that you know, in practical use, AI image generation is, well, let me just quote the article. It's not for making pictures to use, even if that might happen from time to time. Instead, AI images allow people to visualize a concept or an idea, any concept or idea, in a way previously unimaginable. I have found this to be more or less true as well. A bit like Google, AI text and image generation is like an extension to our brains or our imaginations. For example, a lot of the time when I've had to illustrate some concept, I've turned to Google and entered the relevant term and, you know, looked at Google images to kind of get an idea of how other illustrators before me have tackled this concept. Often I pretty much know what I'm going to see, or at least I, I think I have a good idea of what I'm going to see. But I do the search for two reasons. One, I want to confirm my suspicions about what might be the most cliched way of illustrating this concept. To try and avoid that approach, or at least do it better than what other people have done, or figure out a way to kind of add an interesting twist on it or whatever. And two, Maybe I'll see uh, an interesting visual idea that I hadn't thought of that might inspire me. Usually when this happens, it's not some ready-made perfect solution. It's just kind of something that allows a shift in my perspective, a shift in my imagination that allows me to kind of go down a new different path than kind of where I was headed. I never do this kind of Google search because I literally want to use an image that I find in there. First of all, that would obviously be copyright infringement. But I also just mean that I'm not looking to copy anything that I see there. It's more just research, extending what I'm already thinking by looking through a catalog of what's kind of already in the ether. And I've used AI in this way on a couple of occasions now. Basically, feed the concept into the dumb computer brain and see what it spits out. Just like on Google, most of it is pretty generic and literal and not all that interesting. But sometimes the AI makes something that is completely unusable, but in a sense, imaginative, usually because it sort of misunderstood something about the prompt. But that misunderstanding can be useful. It might spark an idea where I go, well, I obviously can't do that, but what if I did this? So it's another way of reorienting your imagination. Since the generative AI tide rose last year, worries about its uses and abuses have surfed its waves. A popular matter for debate, could AI put artists out of work? Just wait, you won't need photographers or illustrators anymore, some surmised. Art is a human practice that will always demand a person's agency, retorted others. And in the murk between, a moderate position emerged. AI will change, not end, art practice, just as pigment, photography, and software had done before. Each of these arguments relies on an assumption that now seems shaky that the images AI generates would be used in contexts where images already find use. At the top of articles, or printed inside magazines like this one, perhaps. As advertisements on billboards or on Instagram. Maybe inside mailers or on corporate websites. Perhaps even as fine art in galleries or as prints on Etsy. Now the article does go on to admit that, sure, yes, in some cases, these things are happening to some extent. But I quite liked this line. Each of these arguments relies on an assumption that now seems shaky. That the images AI generates would be used in contexts where images already find use. I've certainly noticed that the technology works best when I use it to extend my imagination rather than my image generation. 
Seeing an Atlantic cover about cheeseburgers helps construct an idea of what such a topic might look like if taken seriously enough to be granted that pride of place. So the idea there is that AI is an exploratory tool to help imagine things. But then if the Atlantic actually wanted to do a cover story on cheeseburgers, they'd commission an artist to do that job properly. I'll read you a section near the end of the article as it kind of drives home this point with a quirky anecdote. Using AI to create real outputs, copies or amplifications of actual objects, scenes or events, feels harder than allowing it to amplify my imagination. Here's an example. A local bar near work recently started putting out bowls of some unholy snack mix. Seasoned nuts are in there, sure, but also yogurt raisins, dried banana chips, loose Mike and Ike candy, the occasional solitary whole corn chip, fully wrapped Jolly Ranchers. Imagine if a jovial giant ran through a snack foods factory and then emptied his cuffs onto your happy hour. If you said an AI generated this snack bowl, nobody would bat an eyelash, my friends and I quipped over beers. But when I tried to make good on the joke, generating such an image with Bing, I couldn't provoke the AI to success. Its results were competent, but they were too organized to match the chaos of the original. The yogurt raisins were grouped together on one side, the whole bowl seemingly produced by choreography rather than bedlam. I won't presume to opine on the best use of generative AI images, nor would I be so foolish as to try to predict their future. But the bowl of snack mix made me realize that approaching generative image creators in order to produce a desired result might get their potential exactly backwards. Instead, try spilling your unfiltered thoughts into its engine. AI can give them shape outside your mind, quickly and at little cost. Any notion whatsoever, output visually in seconds. The results are not images to be used as media, but ideas recorded in a picture. For myself, not for others. Like the contents of a notebook or a dream journal. So yeah, AI as more of a sketch tool. And maybe a sketch tool that allows more people to visualize things. Will that mean that some visuals will now be created by non-artists with the help of AI? I think for sure the answer is yes, and that does mean that some art jobs do disappear. Many people have expressed concerns about storyboard artists, for example. But even there, I'm not too sure what the size of this effect is actually going to be. I guess my question is always, who is going to use these AI tools to create all of these visuals? I think the most fearful of us out there are imagining that clients might do it themselves. I think that for the most part, having worked with a lot of clients in different arenas, that just doesn't seem that likely to me. I think AI tools will primarily be used by us, artists, illustrators, designers, creative people. And I think we will use it as a beginning more than as an end. See you next week.